to you collected sayings of kodo sawaki part two to you who think the prime minister is a really special person so you think someone is good the question is simply good for what in every age people have been misused and misled by politicians we act as if it's our eccentricities that make up our true nature. Isn't it clear that you're a thief as soon as you steal someone's property? Yet today, everyone seems to believe that you aren't guilty as long as you haven't been caught by the police, interrogated by the inspector, convicted by the judge, and finally locked up in a cell. The same goes for corrupt politicians. As long as they can hide all evidence to the contrary, they consider themselves to be competent and successful. That shows how far group stupidity has taken us. Even when the Chinese emperor was surrounded by shrewd advisors, he always had enough wisdom to mislead them. This type of wisdom has nothing to do with the wisdom of the Buddha Dharma. You don't have to be a Gomon Ishikawa to be a thief. Even somebody who's stolen something only once on a whim is still a complete thief. In the same way, Shakyamuni isn't the only Buddha. Everyone who imitates Buddha Zazen is a complete Buddha. We all develop peculiar habits. The powerful and the teachers and the intellectuals who serve them do their best to train us in these peculiarities. In this way, we are tied and twisted in the most complicated ways. Religion means untying these knots. In the end, there is only emptiness. Everyone is trying to make themselves out to be important according to their worldly criteria. What one system built, the other will destroy. What one political power accomplished will be repealed by the next. A person who seeks his true calling won't want to pursue a career. A person who wants to become president doesn't know where he's going in life. Their election is so important to them that presidents and congressmen campaign to rally votes. Idiots. Even if they have asked to become president, I turn it down. How dumb do you think I am anyway? One guy loses the presidential election, so he cries. Next time around he wins the election. And then he smiles into the camera. What makes politicians different from little children anyway? It's exactly the same way with a crying child. You offer him some candy and already a smile breaks out on his teary face. A little more maturity would be nice. Anyone who relies on his resume is a failure. Most people don't live from their own strength. They let themselves be fed by the system. He's a great guy. He can drink two bottles of wine just like that. What's called good? is usually nothing special. Each clique has their own standard, which they use to explain something as good or not so good. People are impressed by strange things. You only need to be a little different and the whole world is impressed. Some are strong, like lions. Others are long, like snakes. Others can see even at night, like weasels. Some have their young stolen one after the other, 
until the day when someone breaks their neck, like chickens. Some are taken advantage of their whole lives long, and in the end, they are slaughtered and eaten. Even the bones and the skin are put to use, like cows. Others always have a place on a woman's lap, where they're happy, like tomcats. All of that is karma. It is neither good nor bad. In the end, a person whose karma is too good falls headfirst into hell. What could be more boring than showing off your skills? Skills are only relative. They're not really worth anything. What lies beyond your talents, that's what matters. When you look at heroes, east and west, past and present, you can clearly see that the strong, as well as the weak, didn't do anything besides exhaust themselves and die in the end. They all gave everything they had, wearing themselves out for an illusion and accumulating bad karma. All beings are blind to the Dharma, and that doesn't just go for delinquents and gangsters. Children who are born blind to the Dharma are raised by blind parents, educated by blind teachers and misled by politicians who are blind to the Dharma. How could anyone around here not be blind to the Dharma? Once there was a great madman in the Sugamu hospital who called himself Ashiwara Shugun. He hung a cardboard medal around his neck and bestowed dignified words to those he met to take with them on their way. Now that the war is over, we can see clearly that what the military did wasn't at all different. After winning the Russo-Japanese War, we thought we'd won colonies. But what really came of it? After losing the Second World War, we realized that we had only earned the hatred of the Russians. Everyone is talking about loyalty to the fatherland. The question is simply where this loyalty will take us. I too was completely convinced when I went to war against the Russians. But after our defeat, I realized that we had done something that we shouldn't have. In any case, it's better not to make war in the first place. The life and death of many depends on whether a single Stalin is born or not. Whether a single person is born or not makes a huge difference. That's why it is so significant that the one person, Shakyamuni, was born. People are good as they originally are, but unfortunately they drift off in the wrong direction. That's because they follow bad examples. The Buddhist school, Sukha Gakkai, promises you happiness. But where is this happiness supposed to come from? From earning money, they say. But what does money have to do with happiness anyway? Didn't Shakyamuni renounce his palace and throne and beg for his meals? Losing your balance because of happiness and unhappiness is what's called illusion. Everybody's karma is different. What's important is the fact that everyone is pulled forward by Buddha in the same way. Dropping off body and mind means to stop wearing yourself out and instead to trust in Buddha, to let yourself be pulled by Buddha. 
Chapter 7 To you who would like to leave your rivals in the dust. We often wonder who here is really better, but aren't we all made out of the same lump of clay? Everyone should sit firmly anchored in the place where there is no better and worse. Your whole life long, you're completely out of your mind because you think it's obvious that there is a you and the others. You put on an act to stand out in a crowd, but in reality there's neither you nor the others. When you die, you'll understand. Buddha Dharma means seamlessness, what seam runs between you and me. Sooner or later, we all end up acting as if a seam separates friend and foe. Poor and rich, important and unimportant, none of that exists. It's only glitter on the waves. There's nothing in the world we need to rack our brains over once it's clear that our deluded and discriminating thoughts are absolutely useless. When the department head was sick, a subordinate jumped past him on the career ladder. He had been recovering. But with this news, his fever broke out again. You really don't need to get a fever over something like that. You say, I'll show you. Yet, you don't even know how long you'll live. Don't you have anything else to do? In the West, they say, man is the wolf of man. The first step in religion must be that the wolves stop biting each other. What we've learned since our childhood days is nothing more than how to pretend we're important. The world calls this education. And what do we try to do later in life? We fight like demons, have sex like animals and feed like the hungry ghosts. That's it. People make a sleepy face if there isn't a fight or competition taking place. They're always wanting to gallop to the finish line. But is this a horse race? Or they swim like otters, wanting to be a nose ahead. In the end, they'll fight each other like little kittens over a ball of wool. In the Buddha Dharma, it isn't about winning or losing, love or hate. Some want to show off with their satori, yet it's clear that something which you can use to show off has nothing to do with real satori. Chapter 8 To you who are sobbing because somebody's put one over on you. At some point, you've got to slap yourself in the face and seriously ask yourself, is your personal gain or loss really worth being overwhelmed by joy and suffering? Sooner or later, Everyone starts thinking of nothing besides themselves. You say, that was good. But what was good? It was only good for you personally, that's all. Why is it that we humans are so exhausted? It is the constant effort to gain a little advantage that exhausts us. Illusion means being unstable. Illusion means being controlled by the situation. 
A person with big desires is easily fooled. Even the greatest con man can't profit from a person with no desires. Buddhism means no self, nothing to gain. You must be one with the universe and all living beings. Non-self means not turning your back on people. All beings are mistaken. We see as happiness that which leads to unhappiness and weep over an unhappiness which isn't unhappiness at all. We all know the child whose tears suddenly turn into laughter when you give him a cookie. What we living beings call happiness isn't much more than that. We often say, I saw it with my own eyes, heard it with my own ears. We act as if this was the firmest foundation there is. But these eyes and ears are not to be trusted at all. Everyone is deceived by their eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind. There are some who cheat on the preparatory exam, so they have to cheat on the real exam as well, otherwise they won't pass. They go so far with their stupidity that I almost owe them my respect. But actually, if you think about it, you find the same sort of stupidity everywhere in this world. It's difficult to drink in moderation. That's because it's the wine itself that drinks the wine. It's exactly the same with the illusions in the world. Take a hundred thousand possibilities. Line them up and compare them. They all lead down a dead end. This way leads down a dead end. That way leads down a dead end. Whatever direction you go in, you are stuck. Now, simply throw out everything that would lead down a dead end. What's left? A man of great leisure beyond learning and doing. Shodoka. Chapter 9 To you who would like to slap your boss with a letter of resignation? As a human being, you can walk freely in any direction you choose. As a human being, whatever you do, you should do it in a way that can't be done a second time. What can be repeated is best left to the robots. Life doesn't run on tracks. Birds don't sing in a major or minor key. Bodhidharma's teaching doesn't fit on lined paper. The Buddha Dharma is wide and unlimited. When you try to hold it still, you've missed it. It isn't dried cold, but a live fish and living fish have no fixed form. In the soldier's handbook, it says that in war, you must be prepared for a thousand different possibility. That doesn't just go for war. There's no rule book for life either. When you try to live your life according to a manual, you're sure to fail. The wild geese leave no traces, yet, no matter where they fly, they never lose their way. There are no footprints on the way of the bird. It's not the same as a steam engine that runs on tracks, or an ox's well-worn path. 
Don't we live life from moment to moment? How could we possibly take life, analyze it, systemize it, and file it away? The sad thing about people is that they can't stray even a single step away from their habits. We constantly let ourselves be distracted by details, and in this way we lose sight of the whole. We buy strange things that we don't want at all, in the hope that we just might win something with the lottery ticket the cashier gives us for free. Actually, studying used to mean gaining insight into life. But now it's turned into just getting qualifications for a job. However much you accomplish in this life, in the end, you won't have anything to show for it. You will die naked. In the world, isn't what we call good or bad, true or false, more or less, the same thing? You've got to stand on solid feet, no matter what direction the wind might blow. Isn't it evident that the greatest happiness consists in doing what you have to do? Not wasting your time in life means sitting stably in the right place at the right time, not missing the precise moment. You can't depend on anything. The value of things changes. This insight is what motivated Shakyamuni to renounce his king's title, to leave his wife and son and become a monk. Chapter 10 To you who wants to begin with Zazen In the world, you'll find all kinds of rewards. But is there any reward that could make you happier than settling your bottom onto your sitting cushion and having the privilege to practice Zazen? If you prefer to believe in this or that other sect, go and follow them. Only those who really want to practice Zazen should do so. What is Zazen good for? Zazen is good for absolutely nothing. Dogen Zenji had something against large numbers of followers. He said they're like flies and worms. They're nothing compared to a single dragon or a single elephant. That's why Zen monks are also called dragons and elephants. Once there were 500 monkeys in the service of 500 Buddhist arhats. One day, the monkeys decided to mimic everything the arhats did. So they did zazen, copying them with their eyes noses, mouths, and whole bodies. They say that in this way a thousand arhats practiced zazen and realized awakening. This is why it's my wish to persevere, even if it's only through imitation, the seed of zazen. When you practice zazen, completely renew yourself. When you practice Zen, it has to be here and now. It has to be about yourself. Don't let Zen become a rumor that has nothing to do with you. Right next to Komazawa University's Zazen Hall is the baseball field. When you hear the cheerleaders practicing before their games, you can truly understand how much we neglect the self. Zazen is the Buddha that we form out of our raw flesh. Just sitting, or shikantaza, 
is the greatest thing that we can do with the raw flesh of an ordinary person. The Chinese character for pelvis or hips is composed of the character for flesh on the left side and essential on the right side. In Zazen, from the beginning, it is essential that the pelvis is firmly anchored on the cushion. In Zazen, the hips are rooted in the earth. The top of the head pierces the sky. When you practice Zazen in a place where you can hear sounds that arouse pleasure, anger, sorrow or contentment, the waves they create in your mind keep Zazen from soaking into your flesh and bones. If you're looking for stimulation in Zazen, you've been hanging out with the wrong crowd. In Zazen, you have to eliminate all stimulation and not practice anything special at all. The body that takes a nap can also practice Zazen. The body that practices Zazen can also take a nap. To practice Zazen together for an entire day is an extraordinary opportunity. To spend the whole day with prostitutes is extraordinary stupidity. If you eat in the evening in order to break into a house afterwards, you are eating a robbery meal. If you eat in order to go to the prostitutes, you are eating a prostitute meal. If you eat to practice the Zazen, then it is a meal of the Buddha way. The question is, why do you eat? When we change the mattresses at Antaiji, it's not the same thing as when the madam of a brothel changes her mattresses. For the madam, it's about luring customers and making money for us and making money for us it's so the people who come to practice zazen don't catch colds whoever comes to practice zazen is a buddha he sleeps on a buddha's mattress eat in order to do zazen sleep in order to do zazen this means that eating and sleeping are also part of Zazen. When you think about earning your living during Zazen, you start saying things like working is also Zen, sitting is also Zen, and you stop sitting Zazen. When you say, on the other hand, that only Zazen is important. Then you start thinking that only Zazen is Zazen and that everything else has nothing to do with Zazen. In our practice, there's nothing sacred besides Zazen. It's Zazen that saves us ordinary beings by taking our raw flesh and molding it into Zazen. Only Buddha together with Buddha can discuss the Buddha Dharma. Buddha, an ordinary person, cannot. That's why it says in the Lotus Sutra, only a Buddha together with a Buddha can penetrate it. In the same way, the mind shared by Buddha and Buddha is only realized by sitting upright, facing the wall, Our Zazen is like waking up from hibernation to a completely new world. Zazen means returning once again to the womb. That's why Zazen isn't work. Everyone is so busy with their calculations that they even forget why they were calculating in the first place. 
Zazen means stopping with all of this calculating. Zazen means graduating from all human hallucinations. Zazen means practicing that which cannot be explained. Zazen means putting into practice that which cannot be thought. Your Zazen alone penetrates heaven and earth. It certifies this place of great liberation. Zazen is the Dharma switch that turns on the whole universe. Samadhi means practicing that which fills the entire universe, throwing yourself into it completely, in every single instant, in every single activity. Simply doing means doing it now, on the spot. It means not wasting the little time you have in life. Myself and all living beings on earth realize the way together by Shakyamuni Buddha. In the Buddha Dharma, this isn't enforced with political power. I, myself, put it into practice. When you sit, you've got to be one with true man, Stalin and Mao. One person sits for everyone. Everyone sits as one. The phenomenal world isn't something that some god made. It arises through interdependent causation. Buddha is an immeasurable cause resulting in an immeasurable effect. Thinking from the basis of non-thinking, this is how Buddha is actualized. It's often said that Zen means non-mind. Non-mind refers to that which is immeasurable and this immeasurable is more than just the opposite of measurable. Apart from Zazen, all of your good deeds come out of your ego consciousness because you're always thinking, I do good. Only when you stop thinking, I do Zazen, are you doing true Zazen? Sit in Zazen with the intention to starve. That means that you shouldn't count on always having something to eat as long as the wheel of the Dharma turns. On the contrary, as long as you keep the wheel of the Dharma turning, it doesn't matter at all whether you have something to eat or not. What caters to worldly feelings has nothing to do with Zazen. The Buddha Dharma doesn't care a whit about what we humans would prefer. What's this all about? All these people sitting around, staring at the wall. What could be more absurd? That's how Zazen appears to people stuck in the impermanent world. What is Zazen good for? This question itself is really good for nothing. What has the invention of the television been good for? And what have you been good for? Isn't everything actually good for nothing? When somebody asks me what Zazen is good for, 
I say that Zazen isn't good for anything at all. Then some say that in that case, they'd rather stop doing Zazen. But what's running around satisfying your desires good for? What is gambling good for and dancing? What is it good for to get worked up over winning or losing in baseball? It's all good for absolutely nothing. That's why nothing is as sensible as sitting silently in Zazen. In the world, good for nothing just means that you can't make money out of it. Often people ask me how many years they have to practice Sazen before it shows results. Before it shows results. Sazen has no results. You won't get anything at all out of Sazen. Recently, We've been experiencing here a Zen boom. In every magazine, there's something written about Zen. But when you read it, you only find a bunch of strange ideas. Some write about what they picked up somewhere secondhand. Some give an account of a one-week seminar with guaranteed Kensho. The problem is that people who have never heard anything about Zen can be misled by such nonsense. If you don't have a clear Buddhist approach to life, it would be better if you kept away from Zazen practice. Ninbutsu practiced with a peaceful mind is true Ninbutsu. Zazen practiced with a peaceful mind is genuine Zazen. Nibitsu practiced in order to get peace of mind isn't true Ninbutsu. Zazen practiced in order to get peace of mind isn't true Zazen. When eating as well, Buddha's practice is perfecting the meal through a perfected manner of eating. Chapter 11 To you who want to strengthen your hara with zazen, through zazen you strengthen your hara. Here, hara means an area in the lower abdomen considered in East Asia to be a center of energy. Knowing that this hara isn't worth a dame is real hara and real zazen. Some try to become thick-skinned through zazen. If it's even the slightest bit personalized, it isn't pure, unadulterated zazen. We've got to practice genuine, pure zazen, without mixing it with gymnastics or satori or anything. When we bring in our personal ideas, even only a little bit, it's no longer the Buddha Dharma. In a word, Buddhism is non-self. Non-self means that I am not a separate subject. When I am not a separate subject, then I feel the entire universe. In true Dharma, there is nothing to gain. In false Dharma, there's something to gain. If you practice Zazen when you are overwhelmed by feelings of pleasure, 
anger, sorrow and contentment. These feelings will haunt your zazen like a terrible ghost. The way of Buddha means that there is nothing to seek, nothing to find. If there's something to find, no matter how much we practice, it's got nothing to do with the Buddha Dharma. If there's nothing to find, that's the Buddha Dharma. Whatever it is you're trying to grasp, even if you get it, sooner or later you lose it again. True wealth is not grasping for anything. It's shining our light inwards and reflecting upon ourselves. When we take a step back, we see that there's nothing to grasp, nothing to run after and nothing to run away from. Reality doesn't arise and doesn't pass. It's neither pure nor impure. It neither increases nor decreases. A monk, Yakuzan, is practicing Zazen and his teacher, Master Sikito, asks him, What are you doing there? I'm not doing anything at all. If you're not doing anything at all, does that mean that you're just passing the time? If I were passing the time, then I'd be doing something, but I'm not even doing that. You say you're doing nothing. What is it that you're not doing? Even a thousand wise men couldn't know it. Nothing is as still and noble as this Sazen that even a thousand wise men couldn't know. The Zazen which Yakuzan practiced and Master Sikito praised. These days, there are some masters who you can sit with for a week. And for a nice sum of money, you're guaranteed a Kenshu experience. It's obvious that anything like that has nothing to do with Yakuzan Zazen which even a thousand wise men couldn't know. Sitting and practicing that which even a thousand wise men couldn't know is the meaning of simply sitting, shikantaza. These days, there's a lot of talk about zazen. The question is simply, what are they trying to do with their zazen? Some toil away to cultivate their hara, to become stronger personalities, to get satori, and so on and so forth. The little monks even call koan training a guessing game. All this is nothing more than the Buddha Dharma from the point of view of ordinary people. But the Buddha Dharma isn't a Dharma for ordinary people. We've got to observe the Buddha Dharma with the eyes of the Buddha Dharma. That's why it is so rare that Zazen itself truly practices Zazen. Some people want to use Zazen to become better people. Zazen for them is nothing more than makeup. This isn't an educational institution here. What we are trying to do is to become a blank slate. Here, there's nothing to gain. Here's a place where you have to let go of an illusion. And the idea of an awakening. The Buddha Dharma isn't about making average people into special people. 
Zazen takes place when you stop elbowing the others to get ahead. You go swimming every morning in cold water, so what? A goldfish does that all the time. You've quit smoking? Yeah, so what? A cat doesn't smoke either. However proud you are of how well you run after this and run away from that, it's nothing more than wandering around in the world of impermanence. True religion is seeing the world as it is, free of all fabrications. Everything is good as it is. We don't need to fool around with it. However unusual and mystical your experiences may be, they won't last your whole life long. Sooner or later, they'll fade away. Ordinary people really go for miracles and magic. They love hocus pocus. Ordinary people by nature don't like practice. They only want satori. They want to earn money without working. That's why they form lines at lottery windows. They don't want the true dharma, but they swarm towards the new sects that promise heaven on earth. You get stuck on satori. You get stuck on money. You get stuck on your position and reputation. You get stuck on sex. Not getting stuck is what's meant by the Buddha Dharma.